Let's talk about RNG. It's an increasingly large part of the gearing process, and it's one that seems to have created community frustration. This video is looking back at Warlords of Draenor and Mop to an extent. We don't know how things are going to be in Legion, but we definitely have reason to believe that they may continue down this road. I'll be tackling this in five topics, which are tokens and slot machines, the Diablo effect, some miscellaneous points, how things were in the past, and then finally we will finish it off with a happy-ish ending. So then, part one, tokens and slot machines. A recent addition to the game is RNG token catch-up gear. In Mists of Pandaria, it was through the Timeless Isle, and in Warlords of Draenor, it was through Tanan Jungle. Unlike some of the older systems where you worked your way towards a reward that you wanted, these ask you to farm currency and then essentially gamble it. Since secondary stats are very powerful and reforging is gone, this creates a situation where perhaps only one out of six or so possible bits of gear from a token are actually desirable. This system creates far more opportunities for disappointment than the past systems. The vendors essentially just act as slot machines, with time being the currency, and I'm going to highlight some things that Ghostcrawler has said on this topic. Yeah, slot machines are addictive too, but I'm not sure they're a stunning achievement of game design, and maybe it's just that gamers can recognize slot machines more readily these days and stay clear, IDK. Well, personally, the latter has been the case for me. I find it creates more annoyance than fun, and really, I'm not a big fan of these catch-up systems which undercut a whole expansion's worth of content, but even at that, I would prefer them to be done differently, preferably in a way closer to the past expansions, and that is something that I'll get onto later. Much of this gripe also applies to things like, say, the crafted gear where it's got random stats. I just don't think that stuff's particularly fun, and more often than not, it just makes you feel a bit sad, which isn't really great. Part 2, The Diablo Effect with Warlords of Draenor, they went full Diablo on gear. It can be Warforged, it can get a gem socket, and also tertiary stats. For me, this is really taken away from the excitement of gearing up my character. You would look at crafted gear, ray drops, and then badge gear, and you would work out your plan. That's how it used to be. That was very clear, very simple, and it was just overall a very easy to understand goal. Well, today, oh wow, you need Ask Mr. Robot Premium if you realistically want to plan your gearing so that you're not wasting your time. There are so many modifiers that being happy with a bit of gear is actually very rare. There are also so many eye-level brackets floating around the place that it's often very hard to work out what bit of gear is the best. Going purely by item level isn't always right, and honestly, all of this just feels like a convoluted way to generate artificial excitement. It's, it's a hassle, it makes gear far less exciting for me, and I think that quite a few others feel the same. And I certainly think it's quite unfriendly to new players and tricky to understand. With Warlords of Draenor, they aimed to simplify gear. I would argue they did the complete opposite. Ideally, I want a simple enough system where a bit of gear is what it is. There's no convoluted crap that gets in the way of what really makes raiding and games like this exciting, and that's killing stuff. You shouldn't have to worry about a million different procs on your gear. Anyway, on to part three, which is just covering some miscellaneous things. Now, I'm going to blast my way through some other RNG aspects here pretty quickly. First of all, strong boxes. I think they work great with the honor system because A, you earn them quickly, and B, they're backed up by a deterministic currency system that protects you against RNG being bad. For conquest gear, well, strong boxes can go and die in a fire. For the garrison and the shipyard, I understand the gameplay involved in making a good team and all of that, but I don't think it's fun, and certainly player reactions to those systems, especially the shipyard, are rather telling. And also, the whole legendary quest system can just die in a fire. It's a shameless retention mechanic which adds no quality to the player's experience past a few nice little set pieces in terms of quests, and it's just there to try to egg you on to sub for another month. I mean, it's... Ugh. It is disgustingly cynical. It is terrible, terrible. No, I don't like it. Anyway, that's most of the elements that I want to cover, so let's move on to part four, lessons from the past. Of course, we need to think about the other side of the coin. How was stuff before all this RNG craziness came in? Well, catch-up was generally covered with badge gear. For an example, in patch 3.2, you would get badges from dungeons or pre-tier 9 raid content. These badges would purchase vendor items from past raids, now, you wouldn't be able to get a full set of gear, but you could definitely cover plenty of slots. This meant that group content, including dungeons, 
was a viable way to gear up your character, and unlike the current system, it wasn't really based on RNG past the actual drops that you would have got. You could set yourself a personal goal, and then you could go and work towards it. The main world content of patches was a lot more optional, and it was more about getting your rep up to get some cool mounts, pets, and sort of weak catch-up gear and various other shinies. Overall, I think this was a pretty decent system, and I distinctly remember enjoying the gearing up process, as it would always help teach class mechanics and get me into dungeons and actually doing things. Now, in fairness to Blizzard, they have done a decent job of bringing some of that feel back with Mythic Dungeons, so that's definitely a plus. So, as we covered in the past, your catch-up was generally something to do with, you know, badges of justice or valor points or something like that. Now, what that has been replaced with is the bonus roll system that the game currently has. Right, I don't know about you, but I don't think that having RNG be the thing that protects you against bad RNG is a really good idea. When I have a bonus roll go in my favour, the only feeling I get is relief. The system doesn't give you the satisfaction of working up to a reward and finally being able to purchase what you've earned, and that's something which I think is very core to an RPG's feeling of progression. I think a good way of doing things is to have a catch-up currency from dungeons and older raids within an expansion, with the old raids giving you enough of whatever that currency is to make them truly worthwhile. This would purchase gear, which is equivalent to the past raid tier. You then have a currency for the current raid tier, which you could use to purchase gear to fill in bad luck from, uh, you know, whatever drops you did or did not get in the raid. The main world content would have a very basic catch-up that would offer a few pieces to get you up off your feet, but it would mostly be based on good optional rewards. Another form of catch-up that I really like is having unique items and iconic weapons such as Keldalar and some of the more famous crafted items from back in the day. Another thing that I definitely like is raid reputations. Back in ICC, I always felt that I was progressing towards something even when I wasn't getting loot from the bosses. If you aren't aware, killing stuff in ICC gave you rep with a faction. That faction would give you a ring and as you got more rep, they would upgrade your ring to a higher quality. It was a really nice system, and I think definitely an example of a deterministic reward system that added a lot of motivation to your day-to-day -day rating. It was definitely, I think, a great way of doing things. Part 5, the happy-ish ending. RNG can, of course, be a cherry on top. Blizzard's idea behind uh, Warforge, for an example, is that you've got a chance of an exciting proc. Oh, exciting. I don't really think it's that exciting. I would rather they would just add more things to the boss's loot table that roll on a personal basis. There are, of course, nothing to do with your loot roll, um, and essentially by that I mean adding vanity items, consumables, gold, things like how you get Felblight off killing Supreme Lord Kazak. Stuff that doesn't particularly matter, doesn't really complicate anything, but is totally nice to have. Uh, really, an example where you can get a bit of lucky RNG that is legitimately exciting, because if you don't get it, ah, you're not really bothered. It's the cherry on top. Hell, if they were to do a system like that, then you could still get some really cool stuff, either, you know, consumables, things to put in the auction house, or just vanity rewards like mounts, as you re-clear the content. And if some of that vanity stuff was BOE, then, well, you've got a really interesting way to make gold by essentially just doing raids, which I think could be really cool. I suppose what makes me a bit sad about how they currently do things is that often it feels like they are dangling out the chance of a reward that you may or may not get based on a random number all the time, and when you do get a reward, whether that will be good or not, that's also based on a random number. I mean, hell, even if you look at dungeons, the loot tables are so big with so many secondary stat combinations, most of which are useless, that it's just not exciting. I'm fine with just having a decent sized loot table and the traditional way of your, your, your bit of gear drops, nothing else happens to it, you can be happy. I think it's been taken too far, and I think they've been trying to use that to create artificial excitement and get more replayability. But I think so much artificial excitement, A, isn't exciting, and B, leads to apathy, which is really unfortunate. Anyway, that's me done for my spiel. What do you think about this topic? Does RNG have a large place in WoW gearing? Can it be fun? Should they change their course? Let me know in the comments, or hit me up on Twitter if you want a more direct chat. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.